Hello everybody, hope you're doing great and are ready for some Volcano updates. During the roughly 20 days I've been away, a lot has happened, as some of you know. We had another seismic event like the one back in March of 2021. It began on December the 21st, just three days after I left Iceland. It continued throughout the holidays with crazy activity that caught people in Grindavík annoyed again, like last time. I arrived yesterday, so I missed all the fun, which I'm kinda frustrated about, but there could be some more fun around the corner. Just today, a lot of smoke started rising up from the lava field in Nátthæi Valley, which was a little suspicious. As exciting as it seemed though, it could be blamed on the weather conditions cold and calm. As I said, I missed all the fun. Earthquakes have calmed down and so has magma movement in the last week according to the most recent GPS measurements. But at what depth is the magma currently? And does this decrease in activity mean that the magma will just cool down and there won't be an eruption? Well, let's check it out in the data and detail section. So, let's first take a look at the last week of earthquake activity on the peninsula. This is very similar to what we saw back in March, but only half as powerful. You can see these patches of earthquakes on the east and west side of the eruption site, which have had some people scratching their heads. They are caused by the magma dike that lies under Fardersvall from Keilir to Nátthæi. The dike causes somewhat of a pressure release which triggers these earthquakes. We have a special name for these earthquakes here in Iceland, Gikk Skjálti. So that means there is not magma directly under these areas that we see of the large earthquakes, but is caused by the magma dike under Ferdasafell. Magma could of course branch over there later in other magma intrusions, and as our experts say, we could be seeing activity like this for the next 100 to 150 years. To show how similar the current activity is to the one back in March, here's a map produced back then that showed the magma dike and two grey areas where the larger pressure release earthquakes would come from. I put the most recent earthquakes over it, and you can see they fit perfectly in. About the magma's current status. Well, our experts have been doing GPS measurements every now and then, and magma has always been getting closer to the surface, based on the results. As of now, it's sitting comfortably at around 1500 meters below the surface, closest under Nátthæi Valley and Geldingadalir itself. Where the eruption could pop up is rather speculative, so I'm saving that for the speculation and prediction section. The magma's surge upwards has slowed down quite a bit between the latest two measurements. It has only climbed about 100 meters in the last five days, but it had moved around 400 meters in three days between the measurements before. Before these latest measurements, when the magma was moving at a decent pace, an eruption would have most likely occurred on January 11th, if the magma would have moved at that pace. With these latest news, it looks like the time frame is out of the window, but the magma's pace could fluctuate. We just don't know. As I said earlier, that this event now is probably only around half as powerful as the one back in March, and it basically is. The volume of the magma dike is now measured at around 18 million cubic meters, but back in March it was 35 million. All of these signs make this magma intrusion look weak and a lot more likely to not reach the surface, but our experts still say that there is a 50% chance of an eruption. After all, the magma is in the same area as before, so it would make sense that it's easier for the magma to carve through the surface as it's been done before. We'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, we can speculate on for example where the eruption could possibly pop up were it to happen. 
Let's check it out in the speculation and prediction section. So, by taking a quick look at the earthquakes in the last three days and analyzing at what depth they originated, we can use that to base our guess to where an eruption could pop up. By doing that, I came up with this map with red being the most likely, orange next, then yellow, and the least likely area being blue. This is based off the current data and is just a guess, a speculation, and it's going to be fun to see how it ages if an eruption occurs. So we're back into the silent waiting game, always pretty annoying. I'm glad to be back, would have been awesome to be at home to feel the thrill of the earthquakes again, the excitement, but it was nice to take a break in a warmer climate. On that note, I'm going to end the video. Really hope you enjoyed and hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.